Hello everyone, it's Trace Face. I'm back again in good spirits. Um, last night uh, I think was meant to be for me. Sometimes we all need a really good cry. I think uh, along with that letter I got in the mail, there were a few things uh, that I cried for last night and um, um, and I needed to get it out. Um, one of them was um, a situation I, I'm dealing with at work with a client who came in um, right before Thanksgiving, uh, during the middle of a Thanksgiving drive we were doing, and um, uh, it's hard for me to talk about. Um, uh, she was beaten so severely by her boyfriend that she's going to need surgery on her arm. <clears throat> um, I took her, uh, she needed to be seen, and I took her in my office for, had her with me for two hours, and um, it triggered a lot of things for me. Um, and it, it triggers for me around the holidays. And um, I, uh, when I'm ready, I will talk. I will talk about um, what had happened to me many years ago. Um, but uh, it was really hard. Um, it was the right timing, though. I wasn't supposed to be in that office that day. And I got transferred over there because we had people out. And um, so, you know, God is good like that. He, um, I was supposed to, I was supposed to take her. I was supposed to get her safe. I was supposed to tell her that she cannot go back to that apartment. Um, that he is going to try and find her. That she needs to go somewhere else. I got her set up at a shelter and uh, I'm going to be seeing her again tomorrow. And um, I had her on my mind all week, all weekend long. Um, so between that and um, somebody I'm working with on Skype, uh, whose story I can relate to, and she's very young, uh, I had a lot, I had a lot um, of stuff stored up. And, um, you know, I... I cry for people. Um, I, cr I cry for people. I cry uh, for their situations, and I cry because I know. I, I, and I know what stage, you know, when you know what stage that they're at, it's, it's, it's really hard. Um, and you know what stage you want them to get to, and you know that they got to go through the stages, you know. So, at any rate, um, I, uh, today I had a, I woke up today, I felt like Eckhart Tolle, I had a completely different outlook on life today. I just, I don't know, it's like I, I looked at this house, this was my grandparents' house, and, uh, I, I thought about how lucky I am, um, Today, when I got home, you know, and the sound of my cats, like, greeting me at the door, and, um, you know, my my friend Adam was, was over here, and he was like, you know, as and as much as I love having him over here, and he's been, we've been really great for one another right now, you know, like, we have the same sense of humor, and he's been helping me, and I've been helping him, and we're in each other's lives for a reason, and, um, We've known each other for a long time, but he's like exactly what I need right now. Um, he's reminding me of who I am and uh, reminding me of my talents and, and letting me see me again in the mirror, you know, when I look in the mirror, which is crazy. However, uh, it's funny. He said um, to me <clears throat> the other day, he's like, you must love like coming here, coming home to this and, and being alone. And um, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I really do. I'm I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. You know, I lived 
in and out of the city for many years. And I am not, I'm going to be honest, I am not a city girl. I grew up in the country. I like quiet. Uh, you know, I like coming home to peace and quiet. I have really bad ADD. So I can't, you know, when I hear people around me, people living around me, um, I, I can't sleep, you know, and, uh, and I did it for years. I had to live that way in college. And after college, I lived in, in Providence for a long time. And, um, uh, it's just not for me, you know? And, um, so this, this was all supposed to happen. You know, I, it's when I found out my grandmother was dying was, was the day that the narc said some really horrible, horrible things to me. And, um, she hadn't been in this house for like a good year. And I was packed up my stuff and I headed here. You know, um, and now I'm actually closer to where I work, so it all works out. Um, I know it's six minutes in now, and I've babbled on about about things going on with me. Um, the thoughts I had today that I really wanted to get out and share with all of you, uh, and I want to reiterate to all of you, and all the years experience I have watched, okay, with couples in my life, and people I've known, and marriages through um, my parents' friends and cousins, relatives, what have you, okay? Um, I want to remind all of you of one thing, okay? If your narcissist or your toxic partner, okay, had been cheating on you with somebody else, I'm going to tell you something. There has not been one, and I mean one, scenario I have ever seen that that works out, okay? And I, and I know it, and I've seen it, and I've seen it time and time and time again. So, um, and, and one, of the, one of the scenarios, I actually thought, wow, you know, maybe these guys uh, will, be the, will be the one case that proves me wrong. Well, guess what? It took 18 years for them. They had been cheating on their spouse with one another in the workplace for six years. Six years! Six years these two were having an affair. Finally, they left their spouse. They got together. They got married. They thought it was going to be happily ever after. Well, 18 years later, and it ended horribly. Okay? So don't ever, ever, ever think to yourself, like, oh, my goodness, you know, um, I was just, you know, this, that, and the other thing, and they went and found someone else, and they're going to do that. Okay, they had these people lined up before they, uh, you know, before you got sick of their crap and discarded them or they discarded you. Um, this is forever what they're going to do. And you have to understand that uh, things are not going to end well for them. Okay, that's because that's not the law. That's not that's not what justice is. That's not what karma is. You know, they might be thinking things are so funny and laughing all the way to the bank right now, but I'm going to tell you something. It might take a year. It might take two years. It might take five. It might take 20, but they'll get theirs. Mark my words, because I've seen it my whole life. Okay. Um, they convinced themselves with each one that, you know, this is, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. No, it's just another dumb idiot that is, you know, enamored by you because they don't know you. And this is how it works for them. This is how I talked about before, how they have to set things up for themselves. Their ego needs to be fed all the time, 24-7. Somebody tell me I'm great. Somebody tell me I'm good looking. Somebody tell me, uh, you know, uh, I, I have a big unit. Somebody tell me, uh, I mean, this is what they're, they're going out there and looking for. Um, continuous, continuous, you know, validation of themselves. Uh, and if, and if the supply isn't giving them that for whatever reason, they're sick of their crap, yada, yada, having problems. Well, the narc, listen, the narc is not going to stay faithful. They don't know what that is. They don't know faithful. They, they don't know how to be faithful. They don't know how to be honest or loyal. Those are not words that they're ever going to understand in life. So my message today is, is that, you know, you definitely are the lucky one for getting out because it was going to happen eventually. 
It was going to happen. It was going to happen after you had a child. It was going to happen whenever. At some point, it was going to happen. They were going to neglect you to the point where that where they were going to leave you. Or you were going to finally smarten up and leave them. The narcissist is a neglectful person. That's all they know is neglect, abandonment, because that's what they saw growing up. So that is what they're going to do. But it's, it's not going to work out well for them, guys. It's not. You know, my ex, sociopath, my, my second narcissist was on, the, was on the level of a sociopath, okay? And when I'm ready, I will tell that story because it's a horrific one. And I'm going to tell you one little thing, and I'll get into this at another point. If you don't heal from those wounds, you will continue to have these doors open for these demonic entities to continue coming into your life. You have to heal your wounds. You have to forgive yourself. You have to shut those doors with yourself. Because what's going to happen is uh, these narcissists, I'm telling you, they are good at what they do. They are good at portraying uh, that they are this type of person that will provide you with this, that, the other thing. They can, they can mirror your personality to a T so you feel like you've met this compassionate, empathetic, wonderful person, and it is not that way. They are evil. They are evil, okay? Um, but when I got out of my second relationship to a very abusive, uh, crazy individual that I didn't know, again, until until, you know, I was forced to know what he was capable of. Um, I was devastated. I mean, I was so beyond broke and hurt. And I had to get a restraining order on him, okay, that the state automatically put from what he did, okay? And um, within two weeks... I had heard he already had this girl, this young idiot, you know, he was like 34 at the time. This girl was like, they said was like 19, something ridiculous. Well, you know, he was with her for a few months. Then he was with somebody else. Uh, and, the, and the next person he landed was like a very established uh, fashion designer in town. I mean, she was like, straight out of college and this girl already had a fan base of like thousands and thousands of people from from her work I mean talk about a slap in the face like I was like oh, oh my god you know well as time went on rumors were were circulating she's a coke addict she's crazy yada 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 lasted two years um he ran away with a girl to New York City because that's where she wanted to go. He was with he he actually cheated on the the fashion designer with this thing. And you hear all these stories, you know, you hear all these stories later on from people that that uh that <laughs> knew knew him and knew the stories. And um you know, uh, he ran away with her to New York City. She broke his heart and left him homeless on the streets with his dog. And he cheated on 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 that one with with this thing that he went to New York with. So so, as devastated as I was, as hurt as I was, as in shock as I was that he could replace me like that, like I I meant nothing. I was nothing to him. Look at how his life has turned out. Rumor has it he's still a freaking bum who lost everything, lost his house, lost, uh, you know, is a bitter, old, alcoholic. So, you know, the last thing I want to say and, and remind everybody of is this. I don't care, okay? I don't give a crap. Okay, how big your home is, how much money you have, how successful you might be at your career and, and, and making money and being successful. To me, what defines true success 
is how you take care of, of your home, how you take care of what's supposed to be yours. You can see, you know, like I said before, the narcissist can sit on that, on that internet as though that's, that's life or death to them. At least people see them as portraying this, that, and the other thing to, to folks of who they, who they are trying to say that it is they are. And people buy this crap. Okay? When the internet came out, that was their saving grace, the narcissist. That's all they have to portray this image. But if you can't take care of what's yours in your home and you are off doing these things to, to what's supposed to be your family... Because let me tell you something, a, a neglectful husband or boyfriend or wife or, or girlfriend is going to be a neglectful mother. Mark my words on that one too. So they can go around and continue to think that they can fool everybody in the community. But when you can't even take care of yours in the home, you are a loser. You are. You have lost. You are a failure. And that's all I had to say for today. I am Trace Face. It's time we all face the truth together.